here's your heads up to this sort of longer podcast is not hugely long 25 minutes or so all about something well, it's another personal story of mine that happened today how treading water the metaphor of then it's time to swim but then feeling guilty disrespectful and the way which we can find of having what we want and two really 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 good questions that will help you get what you really want have a listen Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. Hi, my little unpluggers. Paul here. And I'm not quite sure where this podcast is going to go because I've been thinking and I've got weird stuff going on in my head sometimes. And two things have come together today, this morning. And it's a statement by somebody I heard a long time ago, um, Tiffany Dufu. That's who I heard it from. It's not sort of original. If you want what you never had, you'll have to do what you've never done before. So it's a little bit like the old Einstein or whoever it is, you know, if you do, if you keep doing what you're doing and expecting something different, you know, bit of stupidity there. But that together with, with something else, So before we get into that, and the reason I don't know where this is going, because I haven't got too many how-tos, because I'm wondering whether you'll come on this little exploration with me and do it over a small period of time, and let's just see where we go. Because you see, I was writing in my journal today about how I feel. That's what I do in my journal sometimes, not always on the negative. I felt, I I knew something was changing, but I also felt, and I have been for a little while, when I come back to this subject of treading water, I know there's stuff I want to do. I know, I've listed it so many times, yet I'm still treading water. But what I wrote about was, well, I think this is the time. This is the time to swim. I love working in these funny little metaphors, but I felt it was time to swim. But that made me feel a bit weird too, because I felt really disrespectful, disrespectful of what I'd actually done and achieved in my life. One minute I'm saying treading water and I'm forgetting everything, because that reminded me of this silly little story, and it is a silly little story, and it's about this this religious guy, it doesn't matter, forget what faith or whatever, it doesn't really matter. He was wandering through the desert. And there was nothing. And as he was wandering through the desert, he saw this wall. And it was like a circle of of a wall. And he could see trees coming over the top. And he thought to himself, "That that is is that a mirage? I'm just seeing that." And he walked up to it and tapped on the wall, which sounded like wood, but <laughs> that's because of my desk. And he said, "No, this is real." And he could see the trees and there was lovely vines coming over the tops of the walls and it was, it looked really nice and he could smell in the air the aroma of wonderful plants. You know, that one, you know, when you, you're walking past something and all of a sudden you, it just hits you. That wonderful aroma, that smell. It could be gorgeous and that's what he smelled. And it was lovely and warm. And as he walked around this wall, he found a wooden gate. I'm saying wooden because I want to knock it. And he knocked on that gate, as you do. And the door opened. And as he peered through, the man said, Oh, hello there. There was a man behind the door. And this very religious man said, Oh, I I smell everything from your garden in this desert, this desert of nothing. Look at this garden. And he said, Could I just have a little look? And the man said, Yeah, of course you can. Please come in. Be my guest. Happy to share with you. And he showed him around the garden. He showed him all the little bits, the big bits, the curious bits, the hidden bits, every little part of this garden. And this religious man said, oh, this is so wonderful. Isn't it amazing how God works? It's so amazing. And the man turned to the religious man and said, thing is, 
You should have seen this when God had it just on his own. Mm. And that's a little bit, okay, sort of a very tenuous link to the way I was feeling. Because I knew there was more, which wasn't a part of that story. And I know there's more. And there's lots of things I want to do. Some things I don't know what I want to do, but I just know there's something there. But again, I felt disrespectful by by just ignoring this because, you know, and, and the other thought I had was, imagine talking to your best friend about it's time that they had to change and you ignored all their achievements, all that they've learned, all that they've done, how much they'd changed and, and the effort it took to change, those obstacles that they'd got over, through, round. You know, they'd overcome obstacles, a bit like those heroes' journeys. They'd come home, and yet there was another hero's journey. You're saying, it's time you've got to change, forget that. And, you know, it was like me talking to my best friend inside, my unconscious mind, saying, thanks, but we're off. And I, that didn't feel right, and it doesn't feel right. I feel a little guilty about it, really. So I wanted to think, well, it is right that we should move, should move on, because we should, should, we should all over ourselves. But I do feel that it's in our nature to improve ourselves in the right way, to carry on learning. You know, I think we're put on this world to learn and share. And as we share, we learn from other people and just keep contributing. But not forgetting what we've done. Because if you said that to your best friend, would they help you? Would they go, oh, well, that's that's fine. Let's just ignore that. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's be there best friends might just suddenly ignore you. And my best friend, my unconscious mind, I don't want it to ignore me. I want us to work together. So I want to explore this before just just this thing about treading water and swimming on. And that's why I say I don't know whether that I'm going to give you some how-to issues, if that's a thing. But I want to first, I think, explore both both the achievements and also the not-dones, and just see where it leads. But also see where and what are my needs, my wants, and see where they go before we just suddenly go ignore everything, because I'm not going to ignore everything. And I would hate you to do the same, because I know you're on this adventure with me, your own personal adventure, but our like timelines are intertwining. They're connecting and they're crossing over, and we're sharing, and we're inspiring each other. Those ripples of change, you know, the energy. It's all there in this integrated field of learning that I bang on about. But the thing is, even that thinking and exploring will have to change. Because if you go back to that that statement, if you want what you never had, you'll have to do what you've never done before. So if I just go back and go, okay, I can think of things the way I thought in the past. Will I get any difference? Maybe, because I'm a different person now. And I am trying to get more focused. Maybe my thinking um, skills are better now. A bit more critical thinking. A bit more, maybe my imagination has got richer. But again, just doing the same things may not create the change I want. Not forgetting all the stuff I've done. And that's the whole point. Not forgetting the stuff I've done. So I'm going to do this and I'll report back. But I want you to maybe consider, does any of this resonate with you? Where you want to do more and you feel you've maybe just been treading water a little bit. Maybe something's been holding you back. Maybe some of your ideas have been, you know, have a block, stifled a little bit. Or maybe we've just gone into that fog of, and the noise of everything else, and we, we, we just haven't been able to focus clearly on what we want and take that action. But again, you know, there are a few hows here, because I thought, well, how can I do things differently? Not just sitting back and writing the thoughts down like I do sometimes, and writing down the questions to myself. Because sometimes I found that I would write down the questions, but I wouldn't really think about the questions. I just hoped my unconscious mind would take it in and come up with an answer. And that was a little bit like just dumping on your best friend, I guess. And I don't want to do that anymore. 
So I thought, what could I do? Maybe I could imagine differently going right out into the future. A bit like that legacy we talked about a few episodes ago. Really looking at the things I would want to do. I just notice if if it was easy, what would it feel like? If there was no possibility of failure, none at all, what would that feel like having achieved what I want? Because when I know and can imagine what it feels like, that's going to pull me to find different ways. It's also going to tell your unconscious mind and my best friend how I want to feel. Wanna? How I want to feel. Because when your unconscious mind knows how you want to feel, I believe it can see so much more than we do consciously. And therefore it starts picking up more opportunities to give you that feeling. But if you don't tell it how you want to feel, how can it do that? So that might be a slightly different way. Maybe when I do that, I'll draw. I'll draw it in a, in a not just a mind map, but I'll do it like in a... Um, an artist journal way. Because that's something I'd like to do a bit more of, but I just thought, well, maybe I could do that. So I've got a, a pictorial thing that I can then put into, that will come into words into my head and I'll get that feeling again. So that's another way of, but this is all looking to the future. But I thought to myself, I'm not going to ignore the things I've achieved. So I want to start listing those out, maybe. Thinking about them. Thinking of the things that I've done which I didn't think I'd be able to do. Things that surprised me. Things that I really enjoyed doing. And as I list each one of those, I'm thinking, well, maybe I could just ask myself and think, how did I do that? Because if I didn't think I could do it, or when I look back now, I'm thinking that's a, that was an amazing result. How did I do that? Maybe what were the, the steps I took? What were the, the things I was thinking about? What was my emotions? What was my beliefs? You see, if I can tap into those, that's going to give me a good feeling anyway because I'm thinking about my achievements. And that then takes away the guilt, takes away this thing about not forgetting. But I'm also telling my unconscious mind, these are the things I have enjoyed. Now you put the two together, the ones about the future and the ones I in the past, of all the things I have enjoyed, I am focusing and magnifying just good feelings. How about that? Mm, that seemed pretty good to me. Then I thought of a real how-to. And one of the how-tos, because I can be doing all this, but still have this feeling of treading water. Now, in NLP, we have a thing called anchoring, which is, and we all have it, like, anchoring is a natural state, by the way. Something like, if you remember, maybe you hear some music, and that music instantaneously changes your state. It brings back a memory, but makes you feel different. That music and that feeling are anchored together. So we can think of a good feeling and the old finger and thumb coming together when we get that good feeling. Let it go. And next time we do that a couple more times, just to get that feeling higher and higher, more intense, bring our finger and thumb together or another specific anger. And then after a while, next time, when we, without thinking about that thing, we squeeze those finger and thumb together, we get that feeling again. But there's another thing we call collapse anchors, where we can have an anchor of something which is absolutely what we want and how we want to feel, and the thing that is not quite so good, the thing that's the negative feeling. And the way to do that is, well, I'm going to go back to all those things that I've just done. So I'm going to go through and just re-remember going out to the future and those wonderful feelings. And every time I get it, I'm going to apply a unique anchor. So it could be finger and thumb. I could just touch a knuckle. I could touch a shoulder, one of my shoulders. Every time I get that feeling and make it more intense, boom. I'll even say something like, boom. Give it an auditory, a sound, a word that goes, boom. And that means the more I do it, the, the more connected is this stimulation, this unique trigger. So as I touch my shoulder, if that was it, and boom, I get that feeling again. And then I think of all the achievements I've done. And every time I think of one, I think of that feeling I'm getting, I remember it, 
and I press that same place, that unique place with the, the same amount of pressure to make it exactly the same and boom, say the same word. And I'm doing what we say we call a stacked anchor. We're stacking good feelings on top of one another and just keep stacking and stacking and stacking. So then, when I don't even think about it, I press my shoulder or my, my knuckle or my finger, whichever I'm doing, and boom, say the word, I get a superb feeling now. Now, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to think about the old feeling of treading water. And I'm just going to get that feeling and anchor it once. I'm not going to make it more intense, make it worse than it is. I'm just going to feel it the way it is and anchor it once with a different trigger, different place on my body, maybe a different hand, the opposite hand, a different finger. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to press them both together at the same time and just feel the feelings just change. And then as I'm doing that, I let go of the negative anchor and hold on to that positive anchor and just let that all go around my body, which means that old anchor, that old feeling of treading water will, I know, disappear. And I'll be stimulated with all those wonderful feelings of what I'm going to achieve in the future and what I've achieved in the past. And when having got that feeling, now when I start to explore the things I want to do, this is what I'm thinking of anyway, when I begin to think of the things I want to do, when I explore the things I haven't done but I want to do, and the things I, I haven't even thought about but I want to do, I can apply that anchor to give me those wonderful feelings. But also, just as I write those things down, what I'm going to ask myself is two important questions. These are so important, I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to repeat it a few times. And the questions are, as I think about each one individually, each thing I want to do, or the thing I haven't done and I want, want to do, the question is, what am I doing that if I stop doing it will allow me to achieve this goal, to have this outcome, to have that wonderful feeling? You have to write it down as well, because as you write it, you're saying it and everything else. So what am I doing if I stop doing it will allow me to achieve my goal, my outcome, the thing I want and have that feeling? The second question, we flip it on its head. What am I not doing that if I started doing right away will allow me to have that goal, that feeling, that achievement and start doing the things I want to do? followed by, as always, this or something better. And I do believe when I, I start doing these things in a different way, having collapse that anchor, there are things that are going to come with my goals, my dreams, and I believe your goals, your dreams. Are you up for that? So maybe you just, you might have to listen to this part again and follow it through, make a few notes, and then do it. Take some time out. Find a place where you could be different and really explore these ways. See what you want to do. Remember being respectful of all the things you've already achieved because you've planted those seeds, you've tended them, you've nurtured them, you've grown that garden and now it's time to expand that garden even more. To swim. That's all it is. So I'm going to follow this up. I know I will. I thank you for listening to me on this because this I didn't know where and what it's going to do or where it's going to go. But it's just something I felt I wanted to expand upon from my, my journaling. And by talking to you about it, I'm getting a better understanding of what I want to do, I need to do, or the way to do it. Not the need to, the way to do it. And I'm sure there'll be other ways that come to my mind. And if they do, guess what? I'm going to be back here. I'm going to be telling you about those too. But the thing is, if you could or you want to do this, do let me know. Do let me know some of those things. I'd love to know the achievements you've already made because that, that just inspires me even more. We can share those. No names, but we can share those type of inspirations. The things you want to do and the way you want to feel. What happened when you asked those two brilliant questions? What am I doing if I stop doing would allow me to achieve my dreams, my goals, and get those feelings. And what am I not doing if I started doing it right now? Would allow me to get my goals, my dreams, those wonderful achievements. 
what happened when you asked those questions? What what inspiration did you get? What understandings did you get? Let me know, please, if you would. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. It's a private email. To me personally, I will answer you personally. That email goes nowhere. It doesn't go on my list. doesn't go anywhere. I'm not adding it to anything. I'm not sharing it with anything. It's just you, me, and the unplugged community. This family that we're creating together. And it's all about just moving on. Moving on in a way that is the way we want to move. We're not being left to be the effect of somebody else's cause. We are being responsible for our own reality. We are causing this reality. And it's a reality that we want to enjoy. And when we add the words, this or something better, we're going to create something completely awesome. And I know that when we do this, we will create a difference. Not only a difference in our world, not only a difference in the world of the people close to us, because they're going to feel the ripples and see you change. You are going to be the evidence of the change. But it's going to, well, it's going to spread further and wider than you could ever dream possible. And that's going to be awesome. Anyway, thank you again for just listening to me. Let me air my thoughts, because that's all they were. My thoughts, my little challenges. I'd like to share my personal stuff with you, because I think that's how we learn. That's how we commit to being more. So, till next time, let's go and do something different, and then get something even better different. Have more fun than you can stand. And remember, that old unconscious best friend of yours may just surprise them to feel happy for no reason. Ooh. Anyway, until next time, it's Paul, your friend, saying bye-bye. When you get a gift, how does that make you feel? When someone has given you something, to me, it makes me feel really special, feel connected. What is it like to share a gift with somebody else? Makes you feel special, doesn't it? That act of giving. So in that selfless way that this podcast, Personal Development Unplugged, is based on selfless service, I love sharing everything that I know, everything I hear, all the new stuff. And I really enjoy being sent little links by my friends and by my sons of the things that they've found out. It makes me feel so good, so good in the way that they, they're thinking of me. And I also know it makes them feel good to share it with me. So here's the thing. If you want to feel that good about sharing, wouldn't it be nice just to share this podcast? Share this podcast or something you really enjoyed about it to any number of people, your friends, it's people even you don't really know that well. And just connect and get that sense of sharing so they feel connected, they feel good about being thought about. And you get to have that selfless service feeling of knowing that you're doing something good to make a difference in this world. So if you would, please do share this podcast. It'll make a huge difference in every way, shape and form. You'll never know how far the ripples of change will go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just before you go, if you would, just bear with me for one moment. Well about a minute because I have a very important personal request from old Cluffy here to you I'd like you to do one very big favor for me in fact it's only a little favor but it'll have a a huge effect and certainly affect my gratitude immensely will you go to iTunes and if you're not on iTunes the player of your choice but especially iTunes go to iTunes and complete one of those reviews you know the ones with the five stars and just a little bit of typing to show people and tell people exactly the thing that you love about this this personal development unplugged podcast because when you do it does say so does wonderful things because it will help grow the audience okay you can say well that's your ego Paul but it, it isn't it is a little bit because I love speaking to so many people 
but it also means that you are sh sharing the word and making a difference to those people. So when they read them, they go, oh, I'll have a listen to this. And that makes this podcast a little bit more popular. And if they share it and pay it forward and do the exact same thing, we're going to get noticed as a big community of change makers because that's who you are changing yourselves and being the change you want to see in others and all it takes is that one little five star review well it could be five star could be whatever star you think is most applicable to you if you do that i would be absolutely awesomely gratitudinal if that's a word gratitudinal so anyway until the next time and you'll probably hear this again but please do a little favor for cluffy I'd be most grateful. Until then, or till the next time, bye-bye now. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.